Are Vietnamese Americans actually the most interesting Asians in America? There's a case to make for it, and we're here with a Vietnamese comedian to talk about it. Alex Young in the building. Yeah. Good to see you, brother. Uh, Vic, Vic Gang. Yeah. What are you doing in New York City? Because you, you live in L.A., right? Yeah, I live in L.A. Uh, I flew out for Blue Bloods on CBS, you know, with Tom Selleck, Donnie Wahlberg, the GOATs, household names. And I uh, got a bunch of shows around town, so, hey, and I'm glad to stop by, hang out with you guys. I was just sitting at home trying to finish watching Brother Son. Uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Selleck, though, that's a name I remember from watching, like, the staying home from school when I was, like, in fifth grade yeah. watching all the daytime television. Yeah, my, mo my mom and my sister was were watching Young and Restless, and that's the first time I saw a mustache. You know, I was just like, yo, that's a mustache. That's, <laughs> it was crazy. Yo, you were like, yo, that's something I'll never get. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm not trying to hype Alex too much. And I did. I just learned how to say your last name today yeah, yeah. in Vietnamese. I, you know, I just call Welcome. you Alex Duong for your whole life. Everybody and their mamas. Right. Uh, well, it, to be fair, it is spelled that way. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the D is soft, no pun intended, you know, because I stay hard, you know. <laughs> That's funny. Alex Duong, you are one of the funniest Asian comedians that nobody knows. Oh, yeah. Appreciate that, man. <laughs> appreciate that. I'll take it. I'll Yo, take what do you it. think about that title? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll take it better than the other way around. Like, oh, everybody knows you, but you whack. You know, I'd rather uh, be uh, underpaid and overrated. You know what I mean? But you know what? I, I feel comfortable saying that now because you on the CBS show. You're on the come up. Your name is getting out there. You got some viral clips, you know, Appreciate through Instagram that. and things like that. Yeah, and, and, and you know what I always respect about you, man, is you never shied away from your Viet culture. Like, you, mm -hmm. you have a lot of jokes about... The war, your dad, and stories of being Viet. So you are repping. Like you're, you're not just doing comedy and then just saying you're Vietnamese. You do literal a lot of nah, a good I, amount of Viet jokes. You, you got to because uh, I can't afford therapy. So I'm just I, I got to talk about it on stage. We're more than the war. We got to explore our culture. Our entire culture doesn't do therapy. So I'm, I'm gonna give you these Vietnamese jokes. It's for the people, for my Vietnamese people. It's our way of doing therapy. Is that we pay for entertainment, we get food and everything. You can't bring like hot pot into like a therapist's office. Like you got to eat something. I can't be right, there for an hour right. and not eat something. David, so I guess what what are we talking about today? Well, first off, let's talk about Asian American representation. You know, we're mm -hmm. always talking about in this channel, Southeast Asians need to get more opportunity, more windows mm -hmm. that they can shoot the gap through. When is it going to happen, or is it happening? Yeah. It's happening right now. I mean, you got Ali Wong, who's, you know, she represents for Southeast Asians. She's doing her thing. Just swept award season. She's going to keep sweeping award season. Right. One of the nicest but, people. When, when did she become Southeast Asian, though? I think, you I know think, what I mean? Bro, hey, listen. I, I know, I know. Keep Baby us, Cobra. Keep, no, we, we, we got to, because we, we, when we talk about Ali, to me, yes, she is half. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I mean, I guess what is so... Vietnamese about her. She speaks Vietnamese to me when we when she's at the comedy store. Oh, she does. Yeah, she speaks oh, okay. fluent Vietnamese. We speak Vietnamese to each other. I test her because like if you right, say you, Vietnamese, I'm, right. I'm gonna test you. Okay, right, because yeah. the blur the lines between Cantonese and Vietnamese get very blurry sometimes. For sure, that's true, right? Wait, For sure. I so this is news to me that Ali Wong speaks conversational or fluent Vietnamese. Fluent. Yeah, all right. So I she speaks she, Vietnamese she gets, to me she's when Viet. she's at the comedy store. She gets that is, That's a pretty Viet thing to do is to yeah. speak Vietnamese. And she's got an Emmy, so, you know, she's got right, the right. <laughs> Is it an Emmy or an Emmy? Emmy. Emmy. Emmy for M. Emmy for M. Yeah. 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 yeah for um, sure. So I guess, you know, for a long time, we, we, we're just in this cycle, right? People ask that question, but you're on the inside, and obviously you're going to benefit from when Southeast Asians get their chance. Is it is it coming, or is it just you're like Gran Torino number two? I'm Yo, waiting for it. Hey, like, I'm I'm waiting for every opportunity. I would love to be in the room for every opportunity, but the, it just can't just because there's only so many amount of seats. But a seat at the table, I want my own table, you know. So we're busy making our own table, whether it be on social media or whether it be wherever else. I don't know. Then maybe it can translate over to the mainstream. But I'm, you know, mainstream that happens to, you know, be underground as well in the Vietnamese community. But also I can flip over and do shows like Blue Bloods. I can do all American shows. I could be the only uh, East Asian guy on a comedy show. I can do that. I mean, the opportunities are there. It's just the money ain't right yet. Opportunities are there. The money ain't right yet. And the money needs to be right. And it has to be the right show for Vietnamese people to represent. Okay, let's, it's, it's let, really hard to get us out the house. Let's talk about some of the recent Vietnamese projects that did get shine. Okay, there was mm -hmm. a pilot 
that did not get picked up, aka guys, they filmed one episode and you know nobody decided to pick up. But it was called Asian BB Girl, and that mm. was va based in the San Gabriel Valley. Uh, Chinese Vietnamese, you know, Vietnamese ABGs. Essentially, that was the story. It didn't get picked up. There was also uh, who was the uh, that one movie with Robert Downey Jr. Uh, uh, the, the sympathizer sympathizer yeah, that yeah. was a big production yeah huge production like, I, I went in like eight times for that thing oh, oh bro i didn't get i didn't get it but i know the people who did get it and they're well deserved like these guys are like the real deal like like juilliard level like trained motherfuckers that are vietnamese right they I were just waiting they were them. just waiting for the window they of opportunity were they were they were ready though they so, were yeah. sharp as a knife did, right? did you yeah. like those projects how do you feel about those things you just do you think vietnamese deserve more stories yeah, absolutely. Even beyond the war, like this one recent project that I went in for, smaller project, short film, Union, but it's a Vietnamese remake of the the old school movie Mannequin, where a, a stay at home father loses his mind and slowly, uh, his wife, who's a tailor, uh, has a mannequin at home for like tailoring needs or whatever. He starts to lose his mind and then he starts to like kind of see her as a human being to help with the baby and everything because he's like gone bad. Shit. My reps were like, ah, I don't know. I don't know about this. It's kind of like almost beneath you. The pay is, isn't is great. It's it's a SAG ultra low budget agreement, short film. They're like, what are you doing? I was like, I see Vietnamese in the dialogue. I want to do it. Any chance I get to speak Vietnamese, I'm going to do it. Because can you, Vietnamese can you speak some right shine. now? I'm going to you, Ciao. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just said, what do you want from me? <laughs> oh. Then it uh, it did make sense, right? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. yeah, for Shit, sure. Hey, now we got a we just had a convo. That's what's up. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Hey, you got your vid pass too now. Oh, you guys got your vid pass. Right, right, right. <laughs> Big I, game. I always wanted my vid pass. Yeah. Ever since I seen that Chucky e. Ken song from back in the day. The who? You never seen that? Uh -huh. you, oh, you want? Uh, you got beef? Oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I just didn't know the artist. I I would, grew up in the same neighborhood as the guys who wrote uh, "Got Rice Bitch." Like yeah. in Texas, they're from Richardson. Oh. They're, they're, you know them. I know Yo, them. you got to yeah. blow this. Wait, well, wait. hold up. Hold pause, up. Because nobody you, knows these guys. Wait, so I heard they were from L.A. I heard they're, where are they from and tell us they're what from, they're doing now. They're from Dallas, Texas. These two really skinny, tall, lanky guys. They're from Dallas, Texas. They wrote Got Rice. And that's the, that's their claim to fame. But who are, I, shout them out. Who are they? I don't even remember their names now, man. Okay. It's been in, It's been since like, what? Are you talking about he, he did uh, Asian Pride, the song? Asian pride. The, you got rice. You got rice. Got, you got food. Got, got soup. Got, got spice, spice. That one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's them. It's not from LA. It's not from LA. Unless you correct me and correct me if I'm wrong, but those guys were the ones that were in the studio writing that song. Yo, I, I kind of like how uh, this history is so debated about where this song comes from because Dude, nobody it, has seen it, these it, people. It's, I, it's always like, oh, LA tastemakers, right, right. oh, New York, which is fine. It's like rightfully so, but there's also all sorts of talent coming from all over the country, man. Right. There's Vietnamese people deep in the South. Right. Like heavy, like not even just Houston, but like Dallas. There's like a huge Vietnamese population out right, there. Right, right, right. Alex, I, can I tell you that David has had this, uh, I guess it's a hot take that Vietnamese are low key the most interesting Asians in America that because they're because there's mm -hmm. such a range and yes there's like people of mixed blood or whether whether they're Chinese or they're Viet or whether from the north or the south the winning side mm -hmm. the loser it's like there they, there's such a recent tumultuous and interesting history you know i mean i mean obviously it's a, it's a lot of bad with the interestingness but or a lot of struggle but would you agree and would you make the case that Vietnamese stories need to be talked about more because they're very, very interesting? They're incredibly complicated. And I think that's what makes for a great story. Mm. If it's just like beginning, middle, end. Okay, next. Uh, what else are we watching? But Vietnamese culture is so insane. Just e even before the war, how like how Vietnam used to be a part of China. Then the tribes like broke off because they wanted to do their own thing. And then China tried to attack and take it back. And they're like, no, 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 no. We're like the... We're like the 300 of China. Right. Like the, oh, is, that, is, that the, is that the Trunk Sisters? Trunk Sisters, yeah. Yep. I, yep. I know, I know, I know. Um, stay, stay well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess, like, what, where do you what do you think are some stories that could get made right now? What are some Southeast Asian stories that need to get told? Like we said, it's unfortunate. You know, like Hmong people, they only got Gran Torino as representation. Like Terrible. you said, a lot of Vietnamese stuff does center around the war. Mm -hmm. but, I, th I think a lot of stories that can be told is like the... 
the migration and like the integrated into society, like all the businesses that get remade and everything. And of course, then you you bring in like the whole Hollywood storytelling, uh, the things like the the amount of people who've been killed just migrating over to America and then trying to start a life and then they get killed again and the gang violence. Like, yo, we have our own Sopranos happening in our backyard. Yeah, that's a real talk. Yeah, it's it it's much more uh, almost like a Sicilian. That Sicilian Americans. Yeah, yeah. We are no, the I mean honestly, of, of Asia. <clears throat> if the Sicilians got all these mafia stories, I feel like Viet's should have their own. I mean, in Yo, a way I, that every time I talk to my Viet friends about their backgrounds and at least what they know of what their parents went through or what their older brothers and sisters went through, it's some crazy. I mean, I don't, I don't want to mm -hmm. downplay. Obviously, Cambodians too. They got stories too, but Viet's in the sense that because there's a larger number. And yeah. they come here and they just set up shop right away. They just get into it. They're like, yeah, hey, man, we come here with just nails. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, what we got? What do we have now? House of Ho? Oh, wow. Oh, shiny houses. You already got the cars. You already got the girls. And now you want to go sober. That's the big story of the show. F*** out of here. How did you get here, dog? How did you get here? Where are you from? Let me hear a real f***ing story instead of you driving around in a f***ing McLaren commercial. I could give a f*** less about that. Can we please... Get some more interesting what, what do you what do you give house a hoe out of ten uh, on, a, on a trash scale like a freaking eight nine it's reality <laughs> tv it's supposed to be like gaudy and just uh freaking over the top it's fine oh look at all these like sweeping landscapes of a 12 person dinner yo I don't, fine sure this, wealth porn that's yeah. what a lot of people want yeah. from asians yeah man. yeah they just want to see all the louis they just want to see like welcome to my crib mm -hmm. type energy like right. how how you ball and how you live in sure that's fine but that's not all do, of us that's not the majority do of you us. think in a way it's almost like the stories are almost I, obviously i would like to see them but maybe for hollywood it almost feels too real so for example for brother son they have these like triad storylines but that stuff actually goes down in the Viet community, how it does in the Brother Son show. But yeah. they don't want to talk about that. They, but it's fake. <laughs> you know what I'm saying for the Chinese yeah. community? Well, I, I don't want to say it never happened for the Chinese community, but it definitely nowadays it's a lot less, Bro, right? Seen... Like, but I would say, man, if you know, Viet, but you know what I'm saying, you know, you know what I mean? It's like if you know Viet's in the urban areas, like yeah, that stuff stuff's you know, going down. The, the the struggle for power happened, like I. All throughout my childhood, me just seeing like Vietnamese gangs. My sister used to date like one of the captains of like Little Saigon hoodlums, and he solid fucking dude, but also took me on a drive by like my first drive by. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, I'm polishing bullets. He's like, yeah, use this red bandana to clean these bullets real quick. We're taking fingerprints off uh, bullets for an Uzi, and we're, he's he's having us loaded up, I'm, and we're having fun. We're having fun. We're like, oh, <laughs> we're loading this extendo. Oh, this is cool. See, this is the Viet uh, story yeah. I needed to hear today. Oh, we're going to go hop in the Prelude essay. Drop, <laughs> oh, man. drop down wide body, baby blue. Oh, cool. Yeah, we're going to hop in that. Oh, we're going to roll around and fucking bang. Uh, and Alex, like, what was the license plate again? Could you recite it? Uh, the, uh, <laughs> our, our deal, <laughs> no comment. No comment. But, uh, <laughs> but it, yeah, no, see, that's funny. Uh, I mean, well, that's, I guess you could say that's sad. But, I mean, that's something yeah. that... It's fascinating. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. Yeah, well, well, I, you know what it is? I just thought of the pilot. Hmm. Vietnamese jeweler, mm -hmm. he's like uh, got two sides of his family. One's mm -hmm. more proper, one's yeah. more street. Right. And but he's, he's in the middle. He's street a, side. Yeah. But, but yeah. he's in the middle because right. he sells custom iced out pieces. Obviously, mm -hmm. you still have to interface a lot with the streets. Say a, the joke, David. So this, say, is, say so the this is the story of Johnny Dang or what? <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, one sister goes to Yale. Yeah. And his other brother goes to jail. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the, that's that no, spectrum. No, no. Al that's Alex, the, real talk. Yeah, yeah. I literally, I don't know about the Yale part, but I've met families, Viet families, that you get, literally got somebody going to jail. You got somebody getting their master's degree. Yeah. In the same family. It's and that is just not bro. that common mm -hmm. in other groups. Yeah, because like, Viet's have that range is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like, like everybody... Every group, first of all, has sent people to the Ivy Leagues, right? There's Ivy sure. League from everybody. But I'm saying within one single family to have like an Ivy Leaguer and then like a mm -hmm. jail leaguer, like, you know what I mean? Bro, like a prison I got, league. I got brothers in prison. I got sisters that own nail salon. I got a sister that runs a gas shop. I'm like, I'm in entertainment. It, it's how did this happen? We're all supposed to just be, we're all supposed to just stay in the same neighborhood and run the same like three to five businesses. But then I got a brother in Switzerland who works for like the watch industry 
you got people like, and I got people all surrounded all around Vietnam, like family members that I've never met. Kind of don't want to at the moment, but you know, it's just because it's complicated. Again, it's complicated. I just, I don't want to be seen as a GoFundMe. Every time you walk into Vietnam as a Vietnamese American, they look at you as like a GoFundMe link. You're like, ah, no, nah, I don't know. I'm, I'm good. I, I think I'm just going to enjoy the beautiful countryside. I think I'm going to do that. So yeah, it's, it's complicated, man. And I think that's the, that's what stories need to be told about, you know, maybe an Americanized uh, Vietnamese person goes over to Vietnam to like about a funeral and then they end up meeting all this family from like north right. and south crazy and, layered story exactly those stories are not being told instead we get what house of ho mm-hmm. that's what we get as our entry mm-hmm. point our introduction but, uh, to america but do you think some people they want to see the house of hoes to be like oh i wouldn't have wanted to see that about street life i want to see like the people who own the plaza and little saigon's Man, life you know what i'm saying like that's your f- can fall for not acknowledging the flaws in our community. That's what fucking makes you, oh, stuff like that makes me so mad because a big part of why the Vietnamese culture is struggling so much is because we refuse to talk about our flaws. Like when I'm talking about my shit on stage, people are just like, people can't even look me in the eye. They're uncomfortable. They're uncomfortable because, you know, they're just like, oh, well, we're trying to like clean up and everything. I'm like, yeah, but you haven't talked about what f- makes you tick. You haven't talked about that. You're just covering it with degrees and businesses and Lexuses. You're going to cover that. But the fucking bottom part is so goddamn fragile that you can't even talk about it. And you're drinking like Cavassier all day just to like drown it out even further. So so what would you say is some of the things that typically make Viet's tick? I guess what are you referring to just to be specific? I guess it, it starts. I mean, it starts at the same place most Asian cultures start at. It's the war. It's like shame. It's the loss of like so many of your friends and foes through the life, through the migration, through people that like through addiction, huge addiction problem in the Vietnamese community, but it's like decorated with parties. Oh Mm. yeah, we're having a party. Oh, he just gets wasted. No, the guy drinks morning, noon and night. He's not celebrating anything. He's depressed. Right. Gotta talk about it. Gotta address it. Gotta make a movie about it. You know, gotta talk about addiction. Why can't we have our shameless? Shameless? Mm, that's funny. Uh, I, 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 it took me a second to get it. So I guess when you see like the Hennessy memes on IG, Jackfruit, et cetera, sure. et cetera. Yeah. Funny, not funny, or you're like, cool start, but we need no. to get, we need to go deeper than this. Yeah, I see it as funny, but let's talk about the flaws. Let's talk about why that is our meme. Why is Hennessy mm. like a, our, our biggest freaking flagship alcohol? Now is it because it's a, it's a French liquor too? Is you the French? Lick? I think it was, uh, yeah, absolutely because of that. And it's like the hardest liquor of all. So, you know, fuck, you're a man. You better drink Hennessy. Grow some hair in your chest, little boy. T- you know? Tupac was talking about Hennessy. Exactly. Growing hair in your chest, you gotta, you gotta be a man. Sorry, I keep cursing. No, it's all good. At this <laughs> yeah, point, yeah, man, we gonna, up, we just I'm gotta. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to do the voc- vocab search in, 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 in Premiere. Gotta get AI just to. I mean, let's let's this. just talk about the shows that are out right now, brother, son. What do you give it out of ten? Oh man, about a seven, about a seven, a, a solid seven. I just think the show is um, more the same. It's cool, you know, brothers. How many times can you make that improv joke? Really? We're do that's every every episode we're doing the improv joke. Oh, you know it's improv. You're gonna improvise them to death. I like I groaned every time I heard it. Action sequences, like, oh you got Michelle Yo on your cast and these are the choreo chore, choreography like uh, that, that's it's weak. I mean, one of the cool scenes, the guys the red ribbon guys coming out of the rocks, that was hard as fuck. That was cool. I saw that, that was really hard. It's episode four, I think. But honestly, casting was all off. I didn't like it. I uh, I think it, it could have been a little more gritty. Mm. Was it lacking some authenticity in your mind? Like, you just can't believe that these guys are connected to any game. No. I, they all look like... They, like, they, they they tutor people at Kuman. Like, yeah. that's, these are yeah. your gangsters. Uh, fine. You got a couple, like, big, bald, like, freaking buff guys. I, I believe them. But when... Uh, what's his name? Chairleg brought in his boys from Taiwan. I'm like, what? Fast and Furious rejects are these right here. Nah. They look like a, a Taiwanese boy band. These so, are your gangsters. It, it just wasn't believable. And when Michelle Yeoh got kidnapped and that little that little non-binary looking kid that she woke up to. And I'm like, 
That's your guy? That's the guy calling the move? Hey, I'm not there yet. You're ruining yeah. the season for me. Spoiler alert. He's like, Michelle, yo, you need to give me all these names and all the people that had all the triads. I'm like, yo, the guy doesn't even have a driver's license. That's your it, guy? It was like they tried to portray something because the studio said this is the script and they just try to fit their homies in a role. Sure. Yeah. The, you know what I'm saying? You, you Andrew, what do you give it out of 10? Andrew, he said... But all that being said, you still gave it a seven. Well, I'm, I'm surprised you said that. Seven, seven? I thought it was pretty high considering what you your feedback about it. Ah, I would I would give it honestly a seven point five. I thought the, f I think everybody should watch the first episode and then decide if they want to watch the rest of the episodes. But I think it's worth watching yeah. the first one. Why can't we get any real ABGs to audition for that show ABG that yeah. got canceled on ABC? <laughs> Where are all Why the is ABG that? actresses? Because you know what I wanted to say. Oh, what I want yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah, hit me, oh, hit here's me. what I want to say. All the real Southeast Asians I know, they're popping on social. Anything from sure. IG to TikTok, let's be honest. I'm going to keep it real here. Mm. OF. Yeah. Okay. Sure. They're popping, right? Sure. Crazy magnetism. But nowhere near the mainstream. Mainstream would have no idea who they are. So when they mm. want to cast a Southeast Asian, it's going to be somebody who's like so all outside of that ASEAN experience. They yeah. don't know They're anything. They're going to be like British or something. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I'm saying, but uh, why is that? I think, I think a lot of those people, they're, they're like, not those people, but like, a lot of the ABG types aren't concerned about network television. They're not, they don't audition. They get everything in life for the most part. They don't have to try. Right. You say, try. You're saying like get money. Let's say for example, and this is the most stereotypical example. You're a bottle girl. Yeah. You're yeah. hot. You're making a ton of money. Cash flow. Why, yeah. why go out to audition in, in sunset, right? Why pay taxes? Right. Why pay taxes? Give me a bag of cash at the end of my work shift. They just, they, they walk around, they get their bag. Cool. I respect that. I respect getting the bag and saying F you to Uncle Sam, but uh, it's so hard to find like Asian talent just because of how hard they have made it for us just to get in. We have to like go through auditions, hundreds of auditions. Right. You, you make us memorize pages and pages and pages of scripts for free. Right. For something you will never get cast in. Something you'll never get casted in and they'll continually and they'll continually to exploit the artist always, right. no matter what. So I guess, do you understand the mindset from people who are like, man, I'm just going to go chill back to the AZN world, whether that's OC, Houston, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. It's Fl the last thing on our minds. That they've already got the whips. They've already got everything you want. They're not concerned about the prestige of, and I know that's a, like a kind of a uppity term to use, but they're not concerned with the prestige it is that comes with being a well-respected entertainer. It's just not something. Right. Maybe with Ali Wong's success, maybe that changes. Maybe they're like, oh man, look, she, she's one of the people that understand prestige. Yeah, you know? I think I think one thing preventing a lot of people from joining the industry, and maybe this is in particular like a lot of Southeast Asians, is that they don't know if they can be themselves and make it. You know, like you said, like the whole process. They don't, they don't even know themselves. Yeah, the whole process of getting into the industry to get your face in front of a casting director. You have to fit all these different roles. And it's like, get an agent. Maybe, right maybe you just like having cash in your hand. Like, yeah. I think cash is something that like Vietnamese people really like. Like, I know and, that sounds weird, but like, well, they like the, the oh, money. The, the, like, like, all the, my friends, they like the to fill the money. Give me cash all day, every day. Yeah. Forget all this digital currency. I'm, I'm about cash. Put cash in my hand. I will dance for you. You know what <laughs> I mean? But with the Vietnamese culture, too, it's just like, we're, we're not great with relationships, so to speak. So, in the industry, you have to make a lot of relationships. You gotta get to know people. You gotta just like talk to them, shake hands, kiss babies. It's it's exhausting. It's very much for kind of like private school kids to right, do. To right. be honest, like mm -hmm. a lot of the actors, they come from private schools, mm -hmm. good families. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But that is how the industry runs, and right. it is like a private club. So obviously, mm -hmm. if you come from a background completely opposite from that, yep. trying to adapt to that is just tough. Yeah, it's a nightmare. I've had to read so many books about it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it is there's how a, to talk to white people, <laughs> chapter one. It's a lot of schmoozing, a lot of grooving yeah. and schmoozing and things like that. That may not be organically developed from a lot of like commonly immigrant backgrounds. Yeah, it's it's rough. Because it's not a common skill set. What I'm saying is like your parents are not going to yeah. give you those skill sets that you're going to need to navigate that particular board game. Yeah, and in Vietnamese culture, the good thing is that you're always being watched. You're always being judged harshly so that prepped me for to work in entertainment because i'm like thick skin yeah i was like oh you're gonna tell me that i'm not gonna be successful because i look like every other asian person I've, a white guy background extra told that to me while i was a principal 
I was a principal on a commercial national and he was like, oh, you know, you kind of look like most like Asian dudes. You know, I don't think you're going to be successful. I'm like, oh, I got to go rehearse my lines real quick. And you come here and you're always being watched. Not so they can take care of you. So they can see if they can work with you or not. So I'm just like, uh, you got to be very careful about that too. What, what gave you the mindset that's so different where you do want to put in all this unseen work to achieve this like very lofty goal that a lot of people would just be like, man, that takes too long. You know what I'm saying? Like, what makes yeah. you different? You were saying it's because you're the youngest child. Yeah. What allowed you to have, I guess, a more, like, uh, narrative-driven or philosophical or idealistic-driven vision for what success is like, rather than just getting racks and racks and racks right. of bread? Mental and illness, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Mental illness, sociopathy, the need to be liked. As the youngest kid, you know, we're always, like, trying to be liked, right? So I'm like, uh, and you also don't get picked on when you're, like, a funny guy. So me growing up in the hood, getting picked on every f day of my life by like, you know, Mexican people, black people, they, they picked on me because I was the only Asian kid. So I was like, oh, if I'm funny and entertaining, I won't get picked on. So I come out here and you got these people that can either make or break your whole f career. If I can make them laugh, okay, at least I'll be in good standing. You know, so it's kind of like a survival thing almost mm. when you're going through it. A couple of times I've wanted to quit and move back home and just go like stack up. Like give, run, they, some they you, run some yeah, small run some cash small cash-only businesses, business, right? Cash-only businesses, dry cleaning, launder money, whatever I need to do just to make that cash. As soon as I am almost going to move, the universe is like, here's another thing that'll pay your bills for a, a whole year. And I'm like, ah, oh, fine, all right. Oh, representation. Now when they started talking about representation and when, you know, Stop Asian Hate started bubbling up, I'm like, okay, people actually care. People actually care about us. This is, this is nice. This is nice right. that people actually care about our well-being. And then mental illness still isn't talked about in like the Asian community. Mm -hmm. We will. I know I talk about it on stage, like how mentally ill, like a lot of Asian cultures are, especially Vietnamese people, because we, we got so much healing to do. And I'm gonna do that through these jokes. That's, a, that's the only way I can do it. And I, I just, I love what I do, man. Mm -hmm. All right, just to switch gears real quick. What are the most underrated Viet dishes that people don't know about because everybody knows right, at uh, this point yeah everybody know you know what i mean the typical bun means spring rolls people know spring rolls i love spring rolls i would say probably like some uh, deep give me some deep cut ones where i'm like because I, I i know a lot about food so i i, yeah. might, I may or might not know food. salty wings with fish sauce Okay, I have only had it a few times. That's, I mean, are those Nook Mom wings? What are we? Yeah, Nook Mom okay. wings. Nook Mom wings are getting a little bit rice. bigger. That's really good. Uh, I would say caramelized pig intestines. Have you had that? Ooh. I haven't had it. Caramelized pig intestines. Is what, it cooked it like called? The, the, the catfish too? The ch the yeah, it's cooked like the catfish. But, but not right. catfish. Right. It's, <laughs> like, it's like cleaned three to five times over in water and vinegar and everything just to get all that stuff out of there. And then you, you chop it up. And you saute it. It is tasty. Andrew's more in the intestines than how, me. How do you say it? Uh, it would, it's called guok. What? So you would just say uh, guok sao. Guok? Yeah, guok oh. sao. Uh, Damn it. I was like, yeah. the shortest thing. I was going to say, I was like, you're not saying it. Yeah, I, I, say. I, I thought it was like guok uh, da, 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 something, yeah, but nah, not. It's just guok gu ka. Like when you okay. go like tit ka, that means it's oh, like caramelized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. call, tit ka. Then you got wo ka, which is uh, so tasty. Oh yeah, I, I got another hey, dat fan real quick because we were talking about <laughs> we got dat fan comedian, we dat fan talk about winner dat of <laughs> America's last comic standing a uh, long time ago. I'm not gonna first lie, the first time he's I saw him, I couldn't breathe. It was funny. It was funny. Sure. Sure. Uh, a flash in the f the pan. <laughs> no pun intended, but. Wait, you pro or against him? I'm indifferent. I could care less. I would say at this point, I'm against him just because, <laughs> bro, what are you doing? You had the golden ticket. Does and he do anything for other uh, comedians as far as you know, like other Viets? Like, is no. He, he does not. He don't reach us. back to the community. He does not reach back to the community. He's busy with his white girlfriend, which, hey, praise to him. Go ahead. Do your thing. But I'm just, I'm looking as a young guy. Uh, that had to pick myself up by my own sandals, okay? Like, I had to work my way, make my own path, which is great. That's great that because it's, it's, it's a foundation that cannot be sh shook at all. But it would have been nice to have somebody to be like, hey, you know, 
you know, you got like a handful of comedians right. that are not Vietnamese that help out the Vietnamese comedians. Hats off to them. They, they've taken care of me through it, the way. I, I agree with you, Andrew. It's true, Andrew. That fan did not Joe Coy it. You know how Joe Coy got the squad of Filipino yeah. comedians that he's like yeah. sort of Where's nurturing that? that nest. But it's, it's hard to like lift people up when you ain't got an hour. You know, he can't do an hour. So that's the true test of a comedian. Can't. Do you got bars for an hour? Do you got a special? If you can't even fill a 30-minute special uh, Comedy Central Presents back in the day, then I I'm indifferent. I could care less, but I ain't going to root for you, dog. Um, I'll, I'll, yeah, you did your thing. Sure. He got you bread. Got, you got, sure you got bread. Yeah, he got bread. And so he's all good. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. I could care less about him. He's He's not... In my on my Vietnam, you, there is no you, Vietnamese you, you, like you, you, Rush Mount, uh, you, Mount Rush. You messing with uh, Keshi? Keshi is uh, he's like a Vietnamese like indie singer, like he, but he's mm. like real vibey with Gen Z, like Gen Z. He's from idea. Dallas, really? Yeah, I haven't. I, I've been out of the loop. Here well, he's like super young, like twenty two years old. That'd be funny like, if I did know him. I'm like, oh man, yeah. I, no, you just like yeah, I just yeah. know him, but I don't know his music. I yeah. just know him from. No, I, 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 I haven't come across him yet, unfortunately. But I, I'm, I'm sure if he's vibing, he's doing his things. That's a really hard like market to crack is the Gen Z like music market. It's he, insane. He's, he's it. He's All the one. Right. Uh, I, I guess uh, yeah, I would put him as a groundbreaking Vietnamese artist because yeah. I, I think that a lot of people don't know he's Viet. Killy, Killy's part Viet. Killy was part Viet. Killy, Killy, Keshi's doing better than Killy though. Okay, Keshi's doing okay. better than. I'm Killy. gonna have to fuck with. I'm gonna have to Johnny Ding. Johnny Dang, my guy. <laughs> I know. Uh, what what is it? Let's we'll we'll wrap. Richie it up Lee soon. too. We got a shout out to Richie yeah, Lee. Yeah, Richie Lee. Uh, what does it mean to be Vietnamese moving forward, man? Like, is it Vietnamese American or is it the Viets from Vietnam right now who are coming over? Like, I know some international mm -hmm. Viets that mm -hmm. are coming over now more. It, are do they more represent Vietnam? Like you know, there's always a rift between the American experience and and the yeah, VQ versus Vietnamese. Yeah. Uh, that's a real big thing. Well, you see, like the rich Viet fobs dripped out in Balenciaga, looking like how Chinese fobs used to look ten years ago. Now, oh, uh, it's it's not a good look, man. You wearing seven different brand names all at once. Like you got to relax on that, man. The art is in subtlety, my guys and gals. But I think Vietnamese is having a hard time to crack because our language is so harsh. But you know how like Chinese people have softened the language a little bit for American digestion. Korean people have like softened their language just for digestion. They made it a little more catchy. I think we're having uh, a challenge right now with making Vietnamese entertainment, Vietnam in particular, to be catchy. Right. What about I, the tape? Hey, you we, can't sing did, on any did, courses. Would you, did you hear that Viet Trap song though? When the dude, yeah, that guy with the backpack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a banger. That's a banger. Well, right there. all right. How can you do an impression of a smooth Vietnamese accent and then one that people think it sounds like, which is like the harsh one? So if you were saying like, uh, it, how are you doing today? Like, oh, uh, uh, like are you doing well today? You would be like, Chào em, chào anh, bữa nay có phải không? That doesn't sound bad. That sounds easy. This is the harsh one. Chào anh, chào em, bữa nay có phải không? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sao rồi? No, that's the one I heard growing up. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, cho tụi tao phở tái bò viên được không? Uh, yeah, chị cho tao uh, tao tô phở tái bò viên coi. That's, uh, uh, like our, our brains aren't registered. Like we're not evolved enough. It's, uh, so it's, are you, it's, all right, are lot. you pushing for some type of movement to beautify or smooth out the Vietnamese I accent am. a little bit because you understand. Listen, mm -hmm. I'm not saying accents aren't authentic to where you come from, right? They right, usually are, right. but you're but you're making the point that hey, at some point we do need the Vietnamese to sound a little bit to better. To go beyond, uh, to go beyond uh, underground, I think we have to smooth it out a little bit, make it a little more catchy. I've had uh, so many conversations with Vietnamese creators about it. Cause uh, I'm like so Americanized and they're like, so there, and they got great beats. They got great video, videography. You talking about like they, a Sue Boy yeah. or something like that? Like which one? Sue Boy? Mm -hmm. I don't know, she's a girl rapper, yeah. Now, so some people that I've spoken to Vietnam, Sue Boy hasn't reached out to me, uh, but like a couple of them who like represent like artists over there, they were like, we talk and I just reach out to them. Cause I'm like, oh, you're Vietnamese, you're doing numbers. You, you, you like prolific, this is cool. I'm um, just like shouting out or whatever. And then like, they'll, they'll reach out to me on the same token be like oh cool it's really great to see Vietnamese people representing so on and so forth and I'm like 
I listen to their stuff on YouTube and it's just, it's, it's hard to catch on. I'm like, yo, this beat slaps, but I can't sing along. Mm. I need those four master is it, chords. Is, it, is that just like a country versus city thing? Cause you know how back in the day in America, I think mm. all accents have been standardized in 2024, mm. but let's go back 50, 60 years ago in the mm. continental U S mm. people used to talk like this. You know what I mean? When we're out, when you get outside yeah. the city, people talk like this. It's and not true anymore, and that's but funny. it was true. That's that those accents are funny. Asian accents are hilarious for the sake of comedy. But if you want to move beyond that, mm. I think you got to soften it down. Yo, we can't just use it for comedy. We got to use it for romance now. Yeah, we got to use it. Yo, push for <laughs> sexy oh, Vietnamese. Sorry. Let's Am say I... some sexy Vietnamese what, what, things, right, man. Last question, last question. Yeah, what yeah, do you think yeah. about the social media um, comedians where it's like they do the Viet accent, but it's like, uh, who's the dude? 50, 50 Dong? You don't talk about 50 the 50 dong. Cent? No, I haven't seen. I mean, he's like yet. the sub doc, or you know what I mean. Like, okay, okay. There's so many okay. guys out there, and who else do you watch? We watch everybody, you know, that pops up. Yeah, I think uh, that's fine, but it has it has a uh, a timer on it. As a timer on, you're gonna get your 15, and then uh, next, you know, you gotta be talking about some real shit. You see it on social media, people get their little 15 minutes. It's cool. They pop off. They get the views, which we don't get do paid it, do, for, by the way. Right. You're do, doing this shit for free. Do a little ABG club event in. Houston, sure. You do a little uh, pop up. You get what a ba- a thousand a rack for that appearance. You know how many hours you put in for that thousand dollars just to show up at a little club and pop some bottles. That ain't enough, dog. You need to go beyond that. It, the, the road's a lot fucking rougher than that, and it requires a lot of fucking money. So how you how are we gonna get the bag? We go we gotta go mainstream. We gotta appeal mm. to a broader customer base. You can't just be a little fish in your own little you know koi pond or whatever, but. I think it starts that way, but I, I would encourage all those guys and shout out to Sub Dog Fifty Dog. I know you. They, everybody got their own hustles on the Sub side. Dog, like, what up, but Alan? Like, but like, they could grow it, or yeah. at least sit down with somebody to think through the possibility. There, there, there's so many opportunities out there, especially with us now, like connecting through social media, that we can support each other. We can combine all the resources and everything. That's what Photo Culture has been doing with Little Saigon, with Sub Dog, like. All those guys hang out together. They're right. homies. Like we hung out at a couple like Vietnamese parties together. All cool, super talented. Now we're now we're getting it. We're we're understanding that we got to combine, get rid of all this f- north south versus bullshit. Mm. Like we we have to combine all the resources. Because if you go down to any Vietnamese like community, you see twenty seven shops that sell the same thing. Yo, we let's share the bag. Mm. It's a bigger bag if we share. And you combine all those forces into this like conglomerate, it can be so much bigger, uh, so much better. More hands make light work, dog. Mm, hey, man, that's a perfect point to end on. Alex, I've mm. known you for 10 years. Yes. And yes. man, you're coming up. I'm happy to see it. Check us out, out stuff out, social media. Mm-hmm. Very funny guy. Appreciate see it. See him on Blue Bloods. All, all around town. When does this drop? In a week. In a week. In, in four days. Oh, four days. February 17th. If you're in Orange County, we got embarrassed by night coming down there. It's going to be a sold out show at the Circle. Shout out to my boy Chris Embarrassed by Tran. night. That sounds like a Viet. It's a VH comedy yeah. show. That's- <laughs> yeah. My boys, yeah. Andy and Fred, they came up with a, a monster brand and we're going to take it to a, a new level this upcoming, uh, you know, thought it's going to be a good time. Oh, for the new year. For yo, the new yo, year. Yo, you're right. the dragon, Chuck baby. M- Chuck McNamoy. Uh, yo, I just thought of this. Uh, play on Cafe Du Monde. Yeah. What if it was Cafe Du Ma? They got that merch already. Oh, they already got that. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're very uh, inventive folks, man. Vietnamese people have so many ideas. Like, we were the first people to turn a Sony Walkman into, like, a PlayStation 4. They got that out there. We're they the first ones to do it. They got, got that in Vietnam. Incredibly inventive. Send me the, send me the photo so we can pop that up. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But yeah, shout out to Ham Choi out in uh, mm-hmm. Houston too. Shout out to everybody, yeah. man. All right, you guys, let us know what you think of uh, this in the comments section below. Dope discussion. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace. Big gang.